why so confident? What are you basing this call on? Yeah, no, great to have you on, we can have you on again. Um, Bitcoin's become very resilient, right? And you're even seeing it today go up while the markets are going down. And next year we have what, we're, what I would say is a perfect storm happening. You have three things happening. The Bitcoin ETF, which we're all talking about, the SEC is, is going to have to relent on this one. They'll delay as much as possible, but by Q1, Q2 next year, you'll have an ETF live. Then you're going to have interest rates hopefully coming down next year too. And then third, which I think is the most important one, is you have the Bitcoin halving happening in April. And normally after that, six, four to six months after, you see the Bitcoin price really run. So the last all-time high was $69,000, which happened after the Bitcoin halving four years ago. I think we take that out and actually breach 100000 next year, end of next year. Larry Fink, who is the CEO of BlackRock, you probably know, um, outlined this, this idea based specifically on the events of the last week that Bitcoin is behaving as a haven asset based on everything that's happening in the world right now. You believe that? I, that's yes and no. So that's happened. It's working out this way for the last couple of weeks. But again, like a year ago and during the pandemic, it didn't work out that way. It traded just like a risk stock. And so that narrative has proven true sometimes and not the other times. I think the other three events that I laid out for next year are more importantly as what's going to drive the price up next year. I mean, still, I think the entire market looks at Larry Fink open mouth with the about shift <laughs> he seems to have had around Bitcoin. And ultimately, it seems to be, he's saying, customer driven. I'm, I'm interested in what you're doing about customer driven to your new enterprise, Beluga. You've been raising funds, I think, four million seed capital coming in because ultimately we talk about institutional adoption. We talk about retail, though, having pulled back. How are people using crypto other than a risk asset? Yeah, that, that's the main thing. So we raised a $4 million round, which we raised in March during the doldrums of the crypto winter. But we really started Beluga to help people not only onboard into crypto, but do more with their crypto. And, you know, it's estimated that there's 400 million people around the world that own crypto, which is amazing. But only like 10 to 20 million of them are actually doing anything with their crypto. We want to help people not just buy and hold anymore, but actually stake, lend, play, earn, pay, and use crypto. There's all these new crypto products launching every day, whether it be Web3 games, crypto credit cards, new staking products, lending products, and no one knows how to use them. They're not feeling confident to want to try to f understand these products at all. And that's where the job will look at to help get these people that already own crypto to start doing more with their crypto. Okay, I, I, why are you doing that and not sort of legacy traditional finance and also the name Beluga? Yes, great. So first, the name Beluga. Uh, everyone in crypto wants to be a whale. Oh. And belugas are some of the smartest whales out there. So we want you to help become a smart crypto whale. Um, why I'm doing this, I've been at BitPay for nine, almost nine years since 2014. And I was always on a mission to help people do more with their crypto. And I, even though I was in crypto for nine years when, state, when DeFi came out a couple years ago, I, I couldn't understand how DeFi worked. I had to Google, how do I DeFi? I ended up in Reddit and then got scared away. And there's a lot of people that are in crypto that you know, are afraid to admit they don't actually understand how a lot of this works, and we're trying to help them do more with their crypto.